Another strange day in week one of this year's welter with some excitement, but also another curtailed finish at the end, starting in Cartagena, finishing on the Caravaca de la Cruz, an irregular climb with some flatter sections and then some 20% ramps. It's about 6Ks long, and the average gradient is a myth, but there was crosswinds at the start, cool, wet conditions with a lot of rain, and what would Jumbo Visma cook up at the start with Sepp Kuss in the red jersey? Unfortunately, coverage didn't start until after the best part of the stage was finished. We saw this breakaway up the road with Kamner, the prohibitive favorite in it, at the start of the race, in the first hour and a half, Jumbo Visma absolutely kicked it off in this flat crosswind section, getting seven of their eight riders in the breakaway or in G1. Remco was there with them, as well as Vlasov, but the UAE leaders, Ayuso and Almeida, were not there, as well as Enric Mas. So before that climb, or on that climb rather, they were behind chasing absolutely full gas. The gap even went up to 45 seconds at a point. And then on that climb, once they were caught, the breakaway went again. But we don't have those images. Uh, so, you know, it's a bit of a shame, but Jumbo Visma are obviously out to make a statement to make the race hard and use their team strength. And you can see here, they're kind of chilling and they're letting even, th there were probably the groups, seven, eight groups across the road uh, in that carnage and the gap goes to 835 so Kamner's sitting pretty Sobrero and Gabregs could be his main threats in the break the peloton turns through this roundabout changes direction again starts to come down you see it's gone down 30 seconds then they turn right and we can't see exactly who launches it but you can see everyone sprinting out of the corner might have been Yumbo. I think it was quick step this time they send it Nico Dan's powering it away with Seri, Catano. This time, pretty much all the top GC contenders do make it. And actually, Jumbo Visma's, their three guys, Kus, Vingard, Rogic, make it. But no domestics apart from Volta. And so with Ayuso there, Master Almeida, who all made it. As well as, yeah, pretty much every relevant guy except Ota Brooks. But his teammate Vlasov is there. This one was really never going all the way. Because why would... Remco put Seri and Catania on the front to just pace the whole time to keep Lenny Martinez or Otterbrooks behind. And the same goes for UA and the same goes for Yumbo. So after a while, even though the gap went to 130, you can see they're not really an echelon formation anymore. It's more of a straight tailwind. And the gap's down to 425 to the breakaway. So they're looking much more in danger. But the oh, G2 on the road pulls up stumps. Otterbrooks and Lenny Martinez, their GC. Well, the gaps they might have lost was saved for another day with Yumbo stopping pulling with Volta. Seri gets the call to stop pulling and it all comes back together. So a lot of crosswind action. The first one was more dangerous before the uh, footage started. And Mola says, please, stop, stop this, you guys. Just let little Lenny get to the final climb safely. So the breakaway is back on. Will Yumbo chase to go for the stage win? The answer was no. They put Van Baal on the front and he gradually lets that gap go back out, refueling. But it's at this point that the stage even gets a bit more bizarre. Remco may be laughing about it with Almeida. There was mud in the last 100 metres on the road in the finish. And so the organisers decided to take, and there was a bit of inconsistent communication about this, but to take the GC times at the end of that 20% ramp with 2.05 Ks to go. But for the breakaway riders, they would still fight it out to the finish. So like stage two, too dangerous for GC riders, but perfectly safe enough for breakaway riders doesn't really make sense to me, but yeah, that, that is what it is. So the GC was kind of nerfed. Um, we thought maybe it'd really kick off on the climb, but in the breakaway, Hamilton goes early on the 6% slopes. That would end up probably being a bit of a mistake uh, with Kemner saying, Sobrero, you close it. I don't have the legs. Gabregs could be there. Navarro, Baronetti were distance pretty early on the climb as well as Caicedo who came back a little bit. But you can see how undulating it is with the two Spanish guys just behind chasing. It's up and down this climb. And he, Kemner, Gabregs could be at Sobrero are probably the favorites for the stage. Kemner trying to complete the Grand Tour triple. And Sobrero's actually won a stage of the Giro, TT, last year. And Gabregs could be is actually a really, really good climber. I think he's quite underrated. Sobrero was trying to, as a time trialist, bang out his tempo. Movistar with Oliveira do the lead out into the base with Catania setting a fierce pace, dropping all the Yumbo domestiques. And Kamna goes clear, drops Sobrero on actually a flatter section, gets the gap, and then he kind of holds it on the steep section and eventually just keeps opening it up. So it's a really difficult climb to pace correctly. And remember, he, they're going all the way to the finish 
Kamner and Sobrero in the breakaway. They're allowed to ride to the finish and contest a stage win. And it was even down to about seven seconds. It looked like Sobrero clawed it back a little bit, but then Kamner took it back out again. And yeah, Catania, super strong. But I didn't really know what the plan was for all the teams because the, the communications about the stage amendment came so late. Like, would the directors have had enough time to formulate a plan in the car, like with 10 minutes to go into the run-in of the climb? Almeida eventually attacks after Catania pulls off, wanting to get some time, perhaps just wanted to keep the power consistent. Vlasov joins him and the three Yumbos, they don't move. They don't move on the climb yet. They're waiting, they're waiting, maybe to see if Remco will pace. Of course, Vlasov and Almeida aren't their biggest concerns, but they're also not that far on GC either. But Remco eventually starts pacing with Vingegaard in the wheel, Roglic fourth wheel, about seven seconds behind them. Then Roglic launches over the top of Mars, and you see here, Ramco decides to close Roglic. He actually moves, does an acceleration, gaps Vingegaard, and he didn't really need to do it because Mars was on Roglic's wheel, maybe opening up a gap a little bit, but then Ramco, trying to close that gap, blows himself up a little bit. And we we don't know, by the way, where the finish is. No one has any idea where the finish is. Like It all looks a little bit muddy. It's like a few cones on the side of the road. But yeah, Mars actually getting back to the wheel of Roglic, with a Uso, then Vingegaard uh, just a little bit behind. Kuss would lose about seven seconds in the finish. And here was the finish. It was these two cones here was the 2.05 Ks to go. And after initially putting all the riders on a gap of two seconds to Roglic, Marso, Uso, Vingegaard, they, and Almeida and Vlasov, by the way, we didn't see in the heli shot, they took five seconds through that uh, barrier. Initially, they put all these guys on the same time because there was not a second gap between all five of those riders to Vingegaard. So then they stop. The GC riders, although Kus sort of attacked, I don't know if he's joking, they stop. Really strange because up the road, Camden's fighting it out and going for the stage win. Um, quite surreal. Uh, and this is the muddy section here where which caused the finish to be neutralized for the GC riders. Camden going clear, the best breakaway rider in the world, completing the triple, an absolute master of his craft. Here's what he had to say after the stage. It was not always easy after the Giro. A lot of setbacks and uh, I'm so happy that I'm back on the podium and uh, that I could take this win. Uh, take us through the stage. Uh, it's been very difficult. How did the breakaway... Uh, yeah, we had like uh, echelons in the beginning. I tried to make it through the echelons as good as possible without like spending too much energy because I already saw it after 15k when everything split that we come together and at the climb again. And then I was in front when the group went and I could just join with having like still a lot of my power in the tank. And then, uh, yeah, in the end it was really tricky because uh, the climb is always like going up and down, up and down. And it was hard to find the moment to drop the others. But I'm really happy that I could find it and that I took take the win. I've got no stage results for you or amended GC results because they kept changing them so they didn't show them on the TV and they didn't. They only actually changed them about an hour ago uh, to put them all on the same time. So, Coos keeps red, Canada beats Sobrero. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you with the TT recap on Tuesday. Ciao.